Are you loving the First Class Live Show? Then join our private Patreon community. Not only will you help to support our ability to provide you with great content, but you can also get exclusive perks like bonus videos and resources, discounts, episode transcripts, and more. So what are you waiting for? Join today at patreon.com forward slash first class life. Again, that's Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com forward slash first class life. The suicide, and this isn't new, but it just happened to, you know, this week, seen it quite a, last week, quite a few. They say check on your strong friends, right? Um, because the leaders, people think, oh, they got it going on. It's, it's those that, and they, so they don't check on you. They don't think that everything's okay. But who do, who, I always just say this, who does the motivator go to to get motivated? Who does the leader go to to get, uh, you know, leadership? And that's the thing. So people look at the glamour. They look at the, oh, you know, uh, I'll, you, you have like over 100,000 something followers on Clubhouse. Oh, Lindsay's doing it. But you don't know what Lindsay feels when when that, that Clubhouse is hung up. And she's like, okay, now now what? You know? So that's a, a you can't get caught up if you're trying to aspire to certain levels. You can't get caught up on what you see people present. Uh, because there's this and, and there's more to it there. And as a leadership, you want that you want if you want what you see people on the outside, you got to be willing to take everything that goes on in the inside behind closed doors too. a lot of people aren't ready for that. You're listening to the First Class Life Show hosted by Lindsay Vertner, a holistic personal development show for high achieving leaders who desire to maximize their impact while creating a life full of purpose, fulfillment and happiness. So grab a drink, grab your notebook, and let's get started. Hey, 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 my good people. Welcome to another episode of the First Class Life Podcast. My name is Lindsay Vertner, and I'm here with Ryan C. Green. Woo, 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 woo. I'm so excited to have him on the show for y'all. So you already know we're going to hop right into the conversation. Ryan, 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 welcome on this good day. How are you? Thank you so much, Lindsay. I am phenomenal. Um, I'm just, we should live in the first class life. What? I'm excited to be here. Everything's great. Good to talk to you today. Yes, yes. So I know who you are and how amazing and all the phenomenal things that you do. But I need you to just let the folks in a little bit. Tell them who is Ryan. Let them know. Awesome. I am Ryan C. Green, uh, born and raised in Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, went to Hampton University uh, for the last 16 years. I have, uh, through my company, Greenhouse Media, really been focused on helping people bring their stories to the marketplace, really helping people through uh, books uh, was what I really spent the first 15 years on, helping people write their books, publish their books be as an author coach. And then uh, recently, the last two years, transitioning into really helping those people who have written books or maybe speakers and leaders really transform uh, that work into digital media. So with my company, Greenhouse Media, we are in, you know, we've really transitioned into helping authors, speakers, experts, you design online courses, content for the online courses, as well as uh, creating digital media, um, uh, uh, brand documentaries, films, things like that to help them expand on their brand. So I, I am in this media thing. I'm just all about helping people really uh, grow their brand, expand their brand outside of just, uh, you know, the pages on the book. Mm-hmm. Helping people with their books, tell their stories, and, and just be a great brand, right? Yeah. So, listen. Now, whenever you were a kid, were you into all the tech? Well, see, this is kind of a hard question because I feel like <laughs> we're the generation it's where we different. grew up without the tech and then right. into the right, tech. Right. So. No, you know, I think um, back then, you know, as a kid, and I tell this story all the time, um, growing, coming out of high school, you know, if you had a high school memory book, one of the questions they asked you was what you want to be when you grow up, you know, and, and I look at my high school memory book when I was 18 years old, I wrote in that book. I wanted to be a multi-million dollar business owner. Now I'm still working on the multi-million part, but I, I absolutely became a business <laughs> owner, right? I didn't, and it didn't really hit me that I all my life, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to run a business. I wanted to be my own boss. Now I didn't know what kind of business at the time. I didn't know what I wanted to do, where I wanted to go. So I went to school and got a degree in marketing because I knew if I knew how to market that I could go anywhere in business. Uh, but um, 
you know, it's funny when you look back at life and things and opportunities and how things shape you. And um, when I got into writing, I realized that, that I had already been built for that. Like I've written 11. I didn't say that, but I've written 11 books myself. Um, but, you know, looking back, there was so many steps and so many choices and decisions in, in my path that led me to that, that I didn't even really see at the time. Uh, so being in media, um, when I started the media company, being you know, doing video and things like that, film and TV was always the plan then. But now nah, coming out of school at 18, I wish I had known then. Maybe I, maybe I don't because you always say that maybe I wish I did. But most people who were doing it then ended up in the news or something like that. And I probably wouldn't have. I probably would have come out of the industry by then, by now. So I'm glad the, the path I took. So I'm, I'm, I'm getting in late. But like you said, with the technology today, it's so much easier to uh, upskill, so much easier to really uh, the, the barriers of entry are, are lower. So I, I'm enjoying it. I'm loving it. And we're putting out some some quality, some quality stuff. If I do say so myself. <laughs> now, that makes me think of something interesting, because I feel like there's those people that are poured into because they see it all around them. And then there's those people that kind of fall into it. So. For example, with me specifically, I never had the aspirations to specifically be a business owner like I am today, but my behaviors always were entrepreneurial. Like I was always making money some kind of way, right, right. <laughs> selling my Halloween candy to my, <laughs> my daycare, my student classmates and all of that stuff. Like I even had this one time where I was making fake tattoos. You know how you draw on your marker, mm -hmm. excuse me, you draw on your arm with markers or something like that. I had me a little sheet of paper and I drew like doodled some pictures and each of them had a price. They was either a quarter what? or three cents or a dime, it it, depending it. on the intricacy. <laughs> wow. Okay. And I just put that in there. I would just set up, all right, you want a tattoo? Let me get your 50 cents. Like I was always doing little things like that, but it wasn't ever my aspiration to specifically be a business owner. And when I think back, I didn't have people around me that were entrepreneurs, especially not black people. And so I don't I don't even know how I it. Well, I do know how I ended up there, but it's it's so fun to me to hear you say like you always knew you wanted to own a business. And so. Was it your surroundings? How did you always know that you wanted to get to that point? And it's funny. I'm glad you asked that question because I um, I didn't have that around me either, you know. And I think mm -hmm. that um, sometimes, you know, there's the question, are, are leaders born or are they created or, you know, I feel like that aspect of me never wanting to just have, I've, I've never been one to have a, a someone always telling me what to do. You know, I, I'm a creative person. Now, here's the thing. Like, I'm a creative person. I can think things, but I don't have a, like, I, I was a songwriter. I still, I, mean, I can write songs, but I can't sing, you yeah. know? So, you know, I, I could always, I could, I could visualize and tell you, hey, this would be great, but I necessarily didn't necessarily have the skill to go and do it myself. Um, so a lot of my development in those areas and, and my dreams being fulfilled were stunted because of the limitations of what I could do. And I have people around me. like when I came out of college, I was ready to move to Atlanta and start working with Babyface and uh, you know L.A. Reid to give you a frame of, of where I was, you know, what time we're talking about. But I was afraid to move down there without a job. So, you know, my mom, worked, you know, she worked for the government her whole uh, life. My dad, uh, he worked for the government, then became a pastor, um, you know, his own church. So maybe that's where it was. And his pastor is kind of like being a CEO. Um, it's not kind of it is, but, it's, you know, it was a different organization. So maybe that was in me through him. Mm -hmm. But, you know, uh, it was just I saw my parents working for the government. I said, you just go to work and do the same exact thing every single day. And that didn't appeal to me, you know. And then I, when I was in college, um, I was probably I was a class president my senior year. Like I was the senior class president. And I, grad, I say that, you know, I, that was great times. But I graduated without a job. Like everybody else was getting their corporate jobs and things like that. And I was like, I don't want to get into corporate America, become middle management and get laid off. So I've seen that happen so many times. I'm like, I don't want that path for myself. Now I'm not saying I, sh you know, I shouldn't have gotten a job, but I'm just saying that that was what motivated me in the direction was always trying to forge my own path. And, and don't get me wrong. It's been not easy and I've had jobs, you know, but, um, you know, it's always been about building my own and creating something that's going to last and building that legacy. Uh, for my name and for my family. 
Awesome. Awesome. I know I had one guest and she, her family, they always had that money and kind of poured into like, all right, you can do whatever you want. And so it's just so interesting, like hearing the different stories of how you came into yeah. what it is that you do yeah. today. And so I know that you have had quite the journey to get to where you've been today. So with all of the leaders listening, what was that like just identifying your purpose? You know, that's a great question. I was, I'll start here. I was 26 years old when I read my first personal development book, uh, my first book that was for enjoyment or, or for edification. Like I read books in school, obviously, but I, I wasn't, a, I wasn't a big reader. So it's kind of crazy that I became a writer and books became my <laughs> career, but I wasn't a big reader. Um, but it was 26 years old when I first started. I started a company before, but I started in direct marketing at 26 years old. And what really motivated me at that time was I'd seen guys who looked like me. I'd seen people who were from where I was from having massive success in that industry. And, um, you know, where the industry, some people call it network marketing, whatever you call it, multi-level marketing. It has a lot of um, negatives that people look at. But if you look at it at the leadership development aspect of it, the personal development aspect of it, that's what really changed my life. That's when I was like, wait a minute, like, OK, here's the missing key, because uh, I didn't come from a family with money. So we weren't they weren't like, OK, hey, you want to go do something? We're going to give you twenty fifty thousand dollars to go and start. No, that wasn't me. I'm sorry. That wasn't my story. But, <laughs> you know, so uh, I was lucky if I got two hundred and fifty dollars from anybody. But you know, <laughs> so for me, it was about that personal growth. Once my mind was open to, to what was out there, I was like, oh, my gosh, this is what I was missing coming up. So that's what really started me on the journey of being a speaker and a writer, an author, because I was like, OK, I need to get back to what others who come up from what I missed. Maybe they can get it earlier. So the journey for me was mm -hmm. all about um, it was an organic journey. It was about just, OK, getting a little bit here, because as soon as I started with that company, I went full time sooner than I should have. And two days after I quit my good gov my, my government, my good job with the phone company, uh, I quit <laughs> it on a Friday, it's September 7th. And on that Tuesday, September 11th, 2001, planes hit the World Trade Center. So I'm like, oh, ah. boy, you know, I didn't left my job and now the whole world is different. So, you know, uh, but I kept pushing. And uh, from there, once I was in that organization, I realized that my my calling was bigger than that. That's when I started writing books. And he's like, well, listen, you're in this organization. You can only promote what we do. We can't go out there and help you do this and that. All right, cool. So I left. And uh, so, I'm, right. you know, I feel like I'm, I probably went off a little topic, but, you know, my, my point is your journey as an entrepreneur is going to be different than everyone else's. But if you pay attention, if you know, if you're focused on where you're trying to go, you'll be able to appreciate each, uh, uh, um, you know, clue that comes along the journey, if you will. So uh, for me, it was just about constantly learning, finding the right people. And, you know, I, I say the saying about, you know, it's been 17 years and I'm like a 17 year overnight success. Right. So it's been 17 years. And now everybody, oh, look at Ryan, Ryan, Ryan. I'm like, yeah, it's been a long time coming. Right. And I'm still nowhere near. I want to go. But I, I know I'm, a, I'm a much further than I was. I'm, I'm appreciative of where I am. But, yeah, it, it's a journey no matter what, what you do. I absolutely agree. Yes. Yes. Because people see that that the lights and the flashy and they're like oh you're everywhere blah blah like it's like you just came out of nowhere right. <laughs> and all i do is see you now and it's like eh, but you didn't see the years behind the scenes and even still now like just grinding it out to get to where i am today and right. so right. people want that that overnight success but don't want the decades long of work that yeah. comes yeah. with it so I did not know that you were in direct sales. Um, yeah, that's where I got my start. Yeah, that's where I got my start. Did it for quite a few years. Yeah. So, what would you say is your biggest leadership lesson that you got from direct sales? Because that is essentially where I started oh, cool. for seriously my entrepreneurial road. Like, I already had that spirit that I didn't even realize, but that is where. I, I really launched into being a business owner. And like you said, it's you can only promote their stuff and right, <laughs> you right. only have so much wiggle room. And it's like, mm, OK, I'm going to go do my own thing. But thanks for like the vehicle to get exactly. to my next journey. Yeah. So what was the biggest leadership lesson that you learned from being in network marketing? Honestly, it was the personal development piece. It was understanding that you have to pour into yourself and become the person you want 
to to attract, you know. So, um, you know, reading every day, you know, the personal development, um, studying, working with people who, who are doing what you do and, and having mentors. So just that really pouring into yourself because in school, we weren't taught that. We're taught to go in and get a job for other people. We're taught to maybe become an expert in some field, but you're still – uh, working for someone else, you're still uh, uh, doing some, someone else's bidding. Working for, as we would say, working for the name on the building, not your own, right? So, mm -hmm. uh, so that was my biggest thing. Understand that it was possible. That was my thing, and, and you know, and I, I kind of after after the fact, you know, you can look back at it, you realize, okay, a lot of this stuff, getting mad at my friends and telling them they gonna be broke all their lives, they're working a job like that was stupid. Like that's not, you know, no. Telling people you got to, you know, we, that was, the biggest thing was selling. Oh, you can go quit your job and retire and be like, yeah, you can. There are people who do that, but you know, that's not really the main reason. That's not really the main thing for many companies. And my thing was that personal development, you building yourself in that leadership development program uh, and then going out to do what you were purposely do. No one was born saying, I want to grow up and be a network marketer. It's just you, you, no one was born doing that. Okay. Uh, but you can use that as a vehicle to to build yourself to become what it is you you really purposed and called to do. Mm hmm. I absolutely agree. Oh, now you have had um, a couple of businesses along the way. So, what was your first official business? And tell us how that went. My first official business is and actually is still technically there is a uh, uh, songwriting and publishing. Like I said, when I was in college, like I was legit trying to be a, uh, the fifth member of Boys Men. So I had started, you know, I had started, uh, my, no, no, I can't, that's a, I remember I told you I could write, but I really couldn't sing. So like, I had the voice like, boy, like Mike from Boys and Men. I had a group, like I started a group and everything in college and we were trying to do our thing, but uh, we weren't that good, but I could write music. I could write songs. So um, I did that and I started my publishing company with ASCAP. Um, the problem is, like, I, but I never had a song recorded professionally by another person. So that was my first business. It's still there. It's out there. But again, what it did was it, it, it helped me learn. So I understood the, the, from that the importance of publishing. So I understood the importance mm -hmm. of setting up an LLC or how to protect your business. So I still learn things through that. Um, a couple of other businesses I've done after that, most of my businesses were all under, like I started Greenhouse Media. I mean, that business is one business, but there were different brands to the business. It was always media related, but there was a time when I started a clothing line, tried to start a clothing line, um, you know, and just had some t-shirts. Didn't go very far either. Um, you know, it, has, it, was a, it was a Christian clothing line. A couple of people in the church bought the t-shirts. I learned from that, that you can't just have an idea and just put it out there. You need to make sure the market wants your idea, right? So uh ended up donating a whole bunch of t-shirts to the Goodwill. But, <laughs> but you know, but other than that, everything else from there has been media related and has been successful. Um, some things were, um, you know, seasonal projects. Like, okay, that was good for them. Some things have, you know, kept going the whole 16, 17 years I've been doing this thing. So, you know, I love that because people see me and they think, oh, Ryan, you're doing so many different businesses you're always doing this and doing that and i tell them like it's one business um just like a, mm -hmm. a viacom is one business but there's different arms the only difference is you only see me you know so it looks like oh he's doing this he's doing that but as a corporation or a big company has different brands that you know um they can look separate when they're all under the same umbrella so that's the thing to me is that um it's all under the same umbrella greenhouse media all when i wrote that plan back in i think it was 2013 all of this that, that's another all of this that i'm doing now was already written back in 2013, 2010, 2011, whenever I did it. It might have been earlier than that, actually. Uh, probably was. Um, but the plan was already there. Like, I've got projects now that I'm starting on or about to start on that literally I wrote out back in, in, in you know, 10 years ago. But now is the right time. Now the door's open to make them happen. Fortunately, no one else has come along and taken them, <laughs> you know. But, you know, the the thing is, like, People see something. They talk about that overnight success we mentioned earlier. People see something. Oh, he's doing this. Like, no, this has been in the works. It's been here for a long time, and now is the right time to do it. So um, it, it's been a journey. I think that just goes to illustrate the power of having a vision. Mm -hmm. You know, you have those people out in the world that are like, oh, I don't make plans. I just do whatever I feel in the moment. 
And that is okay to some extent, but it's like, where do you want to be five years from now, mm -hmm. 10 years from now? If that's what ultimately brings you joy, not knowing anything, then I guess that's all right. But you planned this a decade ago. Yeah. And here it is. You always had that vision, no matter where the path take you, took you to like, okay, is this going towards what I ultimately see for myself? So just tell us kind of what were some of those steps in creating that vision for your life? Because I know that clarity is, is a big struggle for a lot of people, mm -hmm. especially as you're trying to figure out who you are in the world, who you are as a leader, who you are in so many different roles that you have. So what were some of those steps in creating that vision? Awesome. You know, with me, I always start with the end in mind. So I always say, okay, if I want to do anything, what do I want this to become? Uh, because I believe that you've got to have that plan. When you know where you're trying to go with something and you plan it all out. Uh, like when I wrote my first book, it was 2007. No, no, 2004. My first book came out in 2004. When I wrote that book, I had to ask myself and sit down and say, okay, what can this book become? You know, what do I want to do with this book? Where do I want this to take me? What's next? That's where the whole greenhouse media came from. Cause I knew at that time, I didn't want to write a book and go and get it published by someone else. If I was going to go and be my own publisher, then I needed, okay, I need to start a publishing company. Okay. Well, Hey, I want to publish other authors. I knew people were going to ask me how I did it. I want to publish other authors. So knowing the end in mind allowed me to set everything up up front so that when those opportunities came, you were ready, you know, the saying, but, but stay ready. You ain't got to get ready or be ready. However it goes, yeah. you know, whatever the saying is, <laughs> Just be ready. Right. So you got to be prepared for that so that it's not, um, you know, shocking. Or when the call comes, you're not saying yes, knowing you don't have anything set up to support that. Right. So I encourage people mm -hmm. to always know what, you know, where the goal, the end goal is. When I sit down with authors and they give me the book, my first question is, what do you want to do with this? Like, what is, Putting a book out, anybody can do that. But what is this book going to become? What are you birthing through this book? The book is the first step. So uh, for me, it was a matter of, of doing that, knowing where I was trying to go with it, because that's going to direct how you market the book, how you write the book, you know, um, you know, whatever your your thing is, whatever your book thing is. You know, if you're your speaker, OK, well, do you want to be a uh, corporate? You can't just go out there and speak. Do you want to be a corporate speaker or a church speak, you know, church speaker, you know, children speak, whatever it is. So knowing the end goal is major because then it also helps you with the planning process. Um, it helps you understanding, most importantly, what sacrifices have to be made uh, depending mm -hmm. on which journey you choose. So um, that's the biggest thing is no start with the end in mind and, and be honest with yourself about the work that's going to take to get there, um, you know, and, and what you're going to need, the resources you're going to need to get there and, and, and the time it's going to take to get there. I mean, then that way, you know, a uh, friend, you, you, you won't, you know, it's not a, a, a foolproof plan, but at least you're better prepared as you're going along the journey. Yes. Just having that preparation. And what I keep hearing as you're talking is being intentional. Mm -hmm. So for those of you that are new to the show, First Class Life is actually an acronym that stands for the different skills and characteristics that you want to embody into your entire lifestyle mm -hmm. to create a first class life full of purpose, fulfillment, and happiness. And the I in first stands for intentional. And I feel like that is exactly what you have done over these years is be very intentional about the path that you want to take for yourself. What would you say to that? I wish I was that smart to have chosen that word. Because that was the perfect way to put it. That was that was it. You gotta be intentional, and and that's the thing. You know, people. I'm gonna I'm gonna share some now. Hey, you know, people hey. have always. If, if people, I'll, I'll share how I'm mostly described. How people describe me when they when I hey, what what, what do you like best about Ryan? It's always oh, he's a visionary or he's so ambitious. Mm -hmm. And while those are positive, they, they sound positive. It's like, there's a lot that goes into that. Like, it's not like that's fun being that person, right? It's not easy being that, right? You don't necessarily grow up and someone tells you how to do that. So when you talk about that mm -hmm. intention, uh, when you have that vision, yeah, it does make you intentional. It makes you intentional, but also it makes you, that intention brings that hyper-focus, which um, mm -hmm. sometimes comes off negatively to people. <laughs> you know, uh, but it's just because, you know, when you're intentional, when you focus, you know, this is what I need to do to get here. Um, and other people aren't 
in that vein or they aren't taught that or that's just not how they flow, it can be like, oh, you kind of rough around. It's like I'm a, I'm a straight shooter. I'm a, I, I care deeply about people. I never go out to try to hurt people, but I'm, but I'm a very concise and clear communicator, right? So if you ask me a question, I'm going to answer the question. And that's it. There's not a whole lot of fluff around it or things like that. So it's kind of like, well, does he like me? Is he cool? Like, you know, so those kind of things. So intention is, is, um, is, is very necessary, but it does have some, some negative side effects that can, you gotta be, you have to also be intentional on how you relate to other people because you need people to do anything. Um, so you gotta be intentional about that. And uh, that's, that's a, a ongoing growth process for myself. Yes, yes. And I love that you brought up, you know, when people aren't in the same vision of, of the same mindset, what that can do to the relationship. So along your journey, did you have any relationships that you ultimately had to let go or that you had to lose on your journey to creating your vision into a reality? Yep, absolutely. So, I mean, I've, I've been divorced. I was married for uh, 10 years, gotten divorced. Uh, unfortunately, married again, you know, found a, a, a spouse that I'm some on my second marriage. But that, um, you know, marriage, a lot of we had a lot of different issues. But, you know, the business side of it was one of the big issues. Right. Um, yeah. So it's important that when you partner with someone that, you know, and this is what I learned after the fact and, and what may be better going into the second one is that I'm the one with the vision. I'm the one that has that wants to start an organization. I'm the one that wants to do all this stuff. So. Your spouse may not be that, and and that it's not their responsibility to um, jump on board and co-sign everything and understand all the time. But if you've decided to partner, you got to understand that and be willing to say, okay, understand the sacrifice is going to be made from your end. Um, that that you, they're not just because they're your spouse, they're not your, your co, they're not your employee, right? They're not your, uh, your your business partner all the time. They didn't come into that with that, so they're going to need different things. And if you don't give them that then it's going to cause that, that constant knocking. Well, why don't you to support me? Well, I support you because I, you know, I do support you. It's just not the way that you look at it as support or you think that something should happen that way. So um, that was the biggest relationship um, lost. But, you know, as far as friends and people and just business people along the way, I tend to not take things very uh, personally. I don't, you know, so I'm like, I've had people I just don't communicate with, but no one that I have grudges with, no one that I dislike, you know, I, I, I'm open to everybody because I believe in that we all need each other. I want to see, I truly honestly want to see everyone win, right? So all, all our people win. So let me put it, let me be specific. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let me be specific. So I don't know who your yeah. audience is. I don't know who your audience is. So I'm sorry, this, these dudes are Ryan C. Green, not necessarily Lindsey Bertner. If you're out there, like, well, I want to see all our people win, okay? So I'm, uh, you know, so my thing is, I'm, there, there's no one out there that I'm like, nah, I don't like you. I don't, I don't want to be with you. I mean, there's people I may not trust like how they do business, but not, no one I dislike, to put it that way. Yeah, yeah. So I know that the relationship piece was a big obstacle for me mm -hmm. as I stepped into a, a business leadership role because I am a recovering people pleaser. That was mm -hmm. one of my self out sabotaging aspects growing up was I wanted everybody to like me. And mm. if I was your friend, I was your friend. And so letting go of those relationships that uh, didn't serve me. And I don't mean that in a selfish way because we're, there's always an exchange of energy in any relationship, but letting go of those relationships where the direction was just completely different than the direction I was going into. And like you said, it's not that I wished ill upon them or anything, but mm, this is just not in alignment with uh, where I'm going in my life. And so being okay with letting those people go over the years, that was a big struggle for me. And so I'm glad that you brought up like, Hey, y'all, it's all right. You, you can let those people go and you can still be fine. And what would you say is a piece of advice you have for any potential people pleasers that may be listening? You know, and hearing what you just said sparked something that I, I remember, you know, leadership is a lonely place. Like, you just be honest. Like, mm. I, I, there's a lot of people I know and even more people who know me. But when it comes to real friends in your circle, that's a real small number for me. Like, that's a real tight knit circle for me. So I think a lot of times we'll, we'll, especially in social media, especially in this world, where everyone has access. 
we'll get caught up in thinking, oh, I've got 5,000 friends. No, you don't have 5,000 fake, you know, friends. Facebook may call them friends, but they're not friends, right? It's people who are following you, know you, you may connect with, you have connections to some degree. But when you really think about friends, like who can you call and say, listen, this is what I need at this time, and they're going to be there, you might have five good ones, right? And leadership is a lonely place because, and I say that because when it, we, and sadly, I mean, last week or so, we've seen so many people who have seemed to have had it going on and have committed suicide. And this isn't new, but it just happened to, you know, this week, seen it quite a, last week, quite a few. And they say it's check on your strong friends, right? Um, because the leaders, people think, oh, they got it going on. It's, it's those that, and they, so they don't check on you. They don't think that everything's okay. But who do, who, I want you to say this, who does the motivator go to to get motivated? Who does the leader go to to get, uh, you know, leadership? And that's the thing. So people look at the glamour. They look at the, oh, you know, uh, I'll, you, you have like over 100,000 something followers on Clubhouse. Oh, Lindsay's doing it. But you don't know what Lindsay feels when when that, that Clubhouse is hung up. And she's like, okay, now now what? You know? So that's a, a – you can't get caught up if you're trying to aspire to certain levels. You can't get caught up on what you see people present. Uh, because there's there's and, and there's more to it there, and as a leadership, you want that you want if you want what you see people on, on the outside, you gotta be willing to take everything that goes on in the inside behind closed doors too. A lot of people aren't ready for that. Yes, yes, that is a key piece that's not talked about enough in being a business owner. Is just the lonely part of being a business owner. And as you were saying that, I could think back perfectly to a specific time where I can remember it plain as day, where I felt like I literally had no one to talk to because everybody came to me for everything. Right. I was the strong friend. You know, I was always there for everybody. I was doing this. People come to me for advice. I'm helping my clients, helping my kids, helping my husband, helping family, friends. And then it was like, all right, wait, who do I talk to for for this exhaustion that I'm feeling right now, for this uneasiness that I'm feeling right now? And I didn't feel like I could talk to anybody because everybody came to me as the role model. And it was like, oh, oh, what do I do now? And I just remember I just broke down crying and crying like the ugliest not face mm -hmm. <laughs> crocodile tears crying because I felt alone. Like even though I was surrounded by all these amazing people, I didn't feel like there was anyone that I could truly share my intimate moments with yeah. um, going beyond like, you know, sharing with the bestie type of thing. Because at that time, most of my, my circle, they weren't, entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. so to speak, like they had their dreams and their goals and things like that, but they weren't actual business owners. So they didn't get that aspect of the journey that I was on. Looking for amazing products to help boost your first class lifestyle? Then head over to firstclasslifeshop.com where you can treat yourself to personal development books and workbooks, lifestyle affirmation cards, adult coloring books, mugs, notebooks, hoodies, t-shirts, leggings, and more. All products were designed to help you master your mindset, walk in your purpose, and live your first class life because you deserve it. So treat yourself today at firstclasslifeshop.com. Again, that's firstclasslifeshop.com. And then they know, and you know, rather, those people will end up, they, and it's not that they're meaning, that they mean any harm. They only know what they know. So they're going to say, okay, well, mm -hmm. you know, maybe you should get a job. Maybe you should go and do whatever your situation is. Maybe you should do this. Maybe, and it's like, no, that's not the answer, you know, or, or then you feel like, well, if I go to someone and tell them, hey, I'm struggling, everyone's going to think that I'm a joke. Everyone thinks that I'm a fake, that I'm not real, that I'm not really you know, you know, how do I go in and write about success if I'm not having success, you know, right now in this, this, <laughs> this window, you know, so it can jeopardize your whole brand and your whole business when you do open up. So yeah, it's, it's, um, it's a struggle that, uh, definitely you've got to navigate, you know, as that leader and find your ways to that work for you to make sure that you can get what you need to uh, constantly pour positivity and, and uh, refresh and refuel, refuel yourself. Yeah, I think that's an important piece that we need to be transparent about this journey because a lot of people will portray just the good side and the glitz and the glamour. And it's like, well, then if something were to happen, 
everything kind of crumbles. And so people are drawn to you more when you share the good, the bad and the ugly yeah. along the way, because then it humanizes you. Yeah. It, it takes you off of this untouchable pedestal and people still admire you at the yeah. same time, but they feel a, a deeper connection because it's like, oh, wait, they're doing all these amazing things and they still have feelings too. <laughs> right, right, right. That's always been my, my style in my talks and in my books. Cause every book I write, I tell my story. It's all half autobiographical, autobiographical. <laughs> and then I take lessons that I learned first and then I teach other people. So I've always been that person that wanted to be authentic, wanted to be uh, touchable, wanted to be people see, I'm just a regular person. But I read mm. the books by, you know, some of the greatest ones, you know, greatest writers and leaders and like, okay, well that's cool for them. And they never talk about when they struggle. Like, okay, so you just, started day one and you had all this and never had, you know, <laughs> tell me about the journey. Tell me about the time you like for me, I quit for four. Like I told you, I've been doing this thing for six, seven. I, keep, I need to really get, find out when I started getting a date. 16, <laughs> I need to do the math, right? 16, what's 2004? This 2022 minus 2004. What is that? 16 years. So 16 years. Um, but for four of those years, I quit. Like after that divorce, like for 2009 and 2013, I did nothing. Like I quit, like I stopped. I didn't want to do it anymore. And if right before that, I was ascending up. I was like, I had written one of the books. I was my, my one of my greatest works. I was like, this is it. Here we go. And then boom, like that hit me. And uh, for four years, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to be a regular person. I'm going to be an average person. I'm going to get a regular job and just figure out and be a regular person in society. Uh, but the thing about purpose is that purpose won't let you run forever. Purpose will chase mm. you down and say, okay, you ready for me yet? And uh, that's what happened to me. 2013, I was like, you know what? I know what I'm supposed to do, who I am, and where I'm supposed to be. And I uh, got back on this thing. Um, so, uh, you know, th there's times it quit, but you don't hear people talk about that. They don't talk about when they actually gave up and, and uh, didn't do this and didn't want to help people anymore because I needed more help than anyone else. <laughs> you know? So, yeah, it, it's real out here in these leadership streets. Yes. Let's go a little bit deeper into that area of your life, if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. So whenever you realize like, you know what, F it, what were the emotions that were going on for you? Because I know for me, I would have not felt good enough. That is like my ongoing subconscious limiting belief is just not feeling good enough. And so that would drive my people pleasing and mm -hmm. perfectionism and all of those things. So what were the emotions that you were feeling in that moment where you threw in the towel and was just like, all right, let me go do this other stuff. Awesome. You know, I, um, for me, it was a couple of things. One, I felt lonely. Um, mm -hmm. My mom passed when I was in 2001, so she hadn't seen any of this. My mom hadn't seen any of this growth mm -hmm. in me. So when, I, when she passed, I was still working for the phone company. So um, there's a loneliness there when you just feel like, okay, the one thing I did at that time was, you know, I, I was married, got kids, and now that's all gone. Um, so it's like, that's what, like, that was my why. So it's like when your why is taken away, it's like, well, why am I doing this anymore? Right. So there was the loneliness. There was the feeling of not being worthy, um, you know, watching other people do it, knowing you had the talent and the skill. But like, well, why do people want to hear from me? You know, yeah. I'm tired of the work. Like you constantly putting in the work and then um, it's just not resulting in what you want to see. Uh, so that was a, a big feeling. And, and even through that four years, I ended up the way I got out of that was wrote another book, you know, mm -hmm. called Create a Better You. And it's about the 12 essential elements to your greatest comeback ever. And uh, just was the 12 things that I started working on to really give back to, to uh, what I was purposed to do. Um, but really, it was that. I, I had to let, I moved away. I went back down to uh, Hampton and started working at my alma mater. Uh, just trying to start over, just trying to figure things out. And it was just um, for a long time, I just felt like I was just a nomad. It's kind of like I'm just here. No one sees me, you know. And when I say see me, I don't mean like on stage. I just mean like in life and value. Like I was just another person. And while I was sitting there saying, OK, I'll just be another person. My heart knew that wasn't what I was called to do. Right. That what I was I was not born to be just another person. Uh, just an anonymous, you know, employee somewhere. So um, that just, you know, step by step, little by little, started pulling myself out. But really, that loneliness and that feeling of just uh, not being good enough was really what uh, what I was dealing with a lot during that time. 
Yeah, and I feel like that is a big thing for a lot of people subconsciously. I mean, we're not standing in the mirror saying, I'm not good enough, but it, it shows up in our behaviors, in the perfectionism, yeah. in the people pleasing, in the overanalyzing, the overthinking, the doubt, trying to do all the things for all the people. And so I, I just thank you for being willing to share that. And I know you mentioned that you wrote the next book to kind of start that process to pull yourself out. But what were some of the specific steps in changing that mindset to be like, you know, I am born to be something more than this. And that's why I keep feeling that tug on my heart. Yeah, I, I wish I had the book right here. I went through them. Um, some of the things was really I started with um, first thing was creating a better connection. And uh, one of because I told you I felt lonely and I realized that I had to make a better connection. And it was three things I had to connect better with. First and foremost was God. Like I had to connect better with him and reestablish that relationship um, because he's who gave me the purpose. Right. And I was like, well, you know, he's not going to. I never was one who want to blame God for anything that happened negative to me. I always took the onus on that. So that was my thing was taking personal responsibility for everything that happened. I take personal responsibility for my role I played in the divorce. And how can I change from that? I couldn't go and just keep blaming her for what happened and think I was going to think I was going to grow. So I had to take that responsibility. I had a better connection with him, had a better connection with my purpose, which kind of said, okay, well, if this is where you're supposed to be doing, going, how are you going to get there? So I had to connect with that again and just re reestablish myself in that footing. And that's how the book came. I'm like, well, this is what I am. I'm an author. I'm a speaker. I'm a, that's how, you know, podcast and things. So step by step, I was just easily, I mean, easing my way back into it and then had to make a better connection with people. Um, so, you know, being lonely, I said, well, how, who can I connect with? I need to find relationships that matter, relationships that I can, uh, that are pouring to me just as much as I pour into them and just stop being, uh, you know, a, a loner. Stop being, you know, feeling like I'm a drifter out here and just really start connecting again to those things. And then through the other steps in the book that I talk about that kind of led the way, but really started with connection. It started with those three pieces of connecting better uh, to really get me back on that right path. And then from there, doors start opening up because my journey started before social media. So, you know, I told you 2009 <laughs> to 2013. So it was like right before social media really started taking off up until you know, that really kind of helped uh, open up the things and really connect with pe better people uh, once I started really mm -hmm. using that tool in, in a positive way. But, yeah, when it's out there without social media, um, you just, you know, you don't see what other people are doing. You really felt alone. Now, of course, there's a lot of negatives to social media now because that'll make you feel like you're definitely inadequate, too. Uh, but back then, but even, but at least, you know, people are out there, <laughs> you know, but back then <laughs> as like, people weren't sending me greeting cards saying, Hey, just checking on you. So, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it, it was, it was, it was definitely, um, you know, a whole lot of things that went into just the rebirth of me and rebirth of greenhouse and just getting back on, on board. And, um, you know, like I said, once I made that commitment and started the work, you started to see those doors open. You know, that's when I met my, my current wife. That's when I, you know, started connect. I met with, uh, it's funny. We, it's a friend, the reason where I met her was got connected with a friend from college. We started doing a radio show. Um, I didn't even know he knew her. We all went to the same college. They were close. I didn't even know her. Um, and that's how I met her. We would event we would, he and I were doing. So you never know how, uh, just being present will impact any aspect of your life. You know, you and I met because we were both present at the Cheryl Wood event. I didn't know who Lindsay Burton was, you know, but when you walked in, I said, well, who is this tall lady in this red dress smiling like that? Let me go. And I was taking a picture. Let me go. And I found out who you were. I'm like, okay, let me, let me figure out, let me, let me connect. But it's about being present. Just being, you know, we'll get sad. You can't get sad and just want to go sh uh, shut yourself up. Your answer isn't in, uh, you know, the closet hiding from everyone else. You know, being present and being around people, that's how the doors, that's where you'll meet people, being open and, and trying to figure out um, who's who and, and, and how you all can work together in each other's lives. So I encourage you all, you know, that, that that's what helped me. Yes. And what would be a great tip for helping people to connect better, whether it's on social media or off social media? What would that key takeaway be on how to make better connections with the people around you? All right, let's see. I, I'm going to give you a more of a, I don't know what you even call it, not mindset, but more of a, I don't know, I'll just say it. I, I believe it's not a tactic, but being open to changing how you look at things, right? 
You can't be afraid mm-hmm. of collaboration. You, I think that mm-hmm. our people have been taught for so long that we got to hold everything to ourselves. Somebody's going to steal what we do, blah, blah, blah. Now, nah. I believe in abundance. I believe in collaboration. Everything I do, I'm like, who else can I help with this? So I think that we get rid of that and understand that we can build a lot better, a lot faster together. Uh, that'll open up a lot more doors. You know, if, if we look at people and say, oh, well, she's doing a show. I can't mess with her because it's going to mess with my show. No, do the show together. Both of you be a guest on each other's show and help each other out. Meet people that way. So I uh, just just um, changing your mindset on how you look at how things flow. Um, I think that's mm-hmm. going to really uh, do do a lot better than any one tactic I can say. But just, you know, understand there's enough for everyone out there. Just gotta go out there and be present and be willing to uh, explore and, and uh, make those connections. Yes, I agree with that. Awesome. Collaboration over competition. I'm actually going to be doing a room on Clubhouse in a few weeks um, mm-hmm. about that very thing. Like, it doesn't have to be competitive, whether they're in the same industry or not. Um, and just overall, in general, when we come and connect together, and you take your gifts and your skills, and I take my gifts and my skills, and we put mm-hmm. it together, it makes this beautiful thing. And we can catapult essentially to the next level instead of like trying to check it out right, inch right. by inch on our own. Right. And if, you're, if your goal and purpose is really to help other people, as opposed to edify yourself, then you'll work with other people because you realize I can get in front of more people. I can help more people by working together. But when people are like, no, mm-hmm. this is me, 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 that's really, they're, they're really about themselves. It's not about the end goal. They want to use those people so they can get rich or edify themselves. It's not about helping those people. Because if you want to help them, then mm-hmm. you'd be willing to to do whatever uh, so that you can you know work with whoever to make sure that you all can uh, impact those people much more. Yes. And I think that's a missed part of understanding leadership is it's not about bossing people around. It's about coming with a servant attitude and you're here to serve. And a great leader creates more leaders Absolutely. in the respective fields and things like that. So, all right. We've been talking about some good stuff. We done hit on vision, purpose, intentionality, relationships. So, so good. And if you don't mind, we're going to play a little gamey game. game, game okay. Game. I like that. <laughs> Let's see what's up. Yes, yes. Let me pull out my timer. Mm-hmm. Uh-oh, it's so really how this game works is it's called First Class Favorites, okay? okay. So you'll have 10 seconds to answer Uh-oh. whatever it is that I ask. What is your favorite insert blank here? And Sorry uh, about that. I let me like to have I dropped my a earpiece. little fun. I dropped my earpiece. <laughs> I didn't hear the rules. Sorry about that. My, my ear thing fell out. Tell me the rules again. What are we doing? Sorry. Yes. Yeah, so you have 10 seconds uh-huh. to fill in the blank. I'm going to ask you about all different kinds of favorites, okay. and you got to get answered in 10 seconds. Okay. okay that, now, that. you know, we like to have fun on the First Class Life podcast. So whatever is a wager, um, <laughs> the first thing that I always go to is, is take a shot if you miss it. <laughs> a shot. For those of you that are safely at home and you like to partake in some additional spirits in, oh, uh, in your cup, and uh, yes, take a shot if he misses the buzzer. Okay. 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 <laughs> hey, this is for real. So, for real. Listen, we we making a party for the folks. All right. So I'm gonna say it, and then I'll start the timer. So, okay. what is your favorite color? Go. Blue. That's easy. I got dark. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. I thought I'd start with you know. <laughs> yeah. Look, when you set me up, you set me up. It's easy. You going hit me inside the head or something. Okay. Get your practice in. Get your right. practice in. There we go. All right. Okay. What is your favorite food? Go. Pizza. I know. <laughs> I'm like eight years old. Pizza. <laughs> I love pizza because it can taste so different depending on how you make it, yep. where you're so, getting from. So many varieties. Mm-hmm. Dessert pizza, Mexican oh, yeah. pizza. Yep. Yep. Yeah, same. We'll have to go out for pizza sometimes. Absolutely. What is your favorite song? Go. Oh, favorite song. Ooh. Oh, I know. Um, oh gosh, it's right there. Oh, uh, change gonna come. Change gonna come. Yeah, I'm okay. like, I got my top three. I couldn't remember them. Change gonna come. <laughs> yeah, change gonna come. Sam Cooke version. You said the Sam Cooke version. Yes. Mm-hmm. I was about to ask that next, and okay. and you might have been close on that one, but I thought I had it. I got it. I, I know I can. 
it was the pressure because I know my favorite. I got top three. Change gonna come. Um, I can't remember now. Oh, forget it. I just set myself. I can't remember the name of it. That Prince song. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so next one. What is your favorite movie? Go. I don't really have a favorite. I don't watch a lot of movies. I'm gonna go with uh, Set It Off. Oh. Well, you made it nine seconds flat. Oh, yeah, yeah, I just had to say something. I don't, I don't watch a lot of movies. Man, I do watch. What is your favorite time. book? Go. <laughs> uh, Twenty One Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. That's what Ooh, got me started. Okay. That's what got me started in all this. So that's the one that the very first one that you read those years ago that you referenced earlier. Yep, that was the one. Mm-hmm. Yep. Nice. And listen, that's actually going to get added to our uh, running uh, playlist. So we'll have, yes, the first class favorites. If you want to make sure you have access to that, make sure you are a member in the Patreon community because we have a running playlist of favorite books, favorite song. And this next one that I haven't said yet, what's your favorite place to travel? Go. Uh, St. Thomas. Oh, yes, I yeah, have I like not that. been to St. Thomas. You like it? You like? Well, I, I, I obviously, love it. It's yeah, your I love that. That was yeah. I don't. Go, I haven't traveled a lot of places. One thing I don't do a lot of, but that is a beautiful place. I love St. Thomas. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, okay. What's your favorite activity for relaxing? Go. <laughs> uh, bowling. 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 Do you have shoes? I have shoes. Like, are have, you that bowler that has yeah. the outfit, the shoes? Not the, the outfit. Ball. Got my own ball. Ten pin, of course. Got my own ball. Got shoes. Uh, it's one sport that I'm actually better than most people who play it. So, yeah. If you can say the sport versus <laughs> the game. But, yeah. A bowling. I don't get to do it often, but definitely bowling. The older I get, I don't get my knees and hips and wrists can take it. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I love it. Well, listen, I'm going to challenge you to go bowling in this month of February. This month? Uh-oh. Specifically because you said you don't get to do it often, and I'm not sure when's the last time you went bowling, but that I'm is going to ex- be my challenge to you. I'm going to accept that challenge, Thank Lizzie. You for it? Yep, I'm going, yes. I'm going to take a picture, make sure I post it, show it, show it to you and everything. I'm going to do yes, that. yes. Because we have to be intentional about doing the things that we love to do You're so right. that we can stay rejuvenated and refreshed and refueled so we can keep serving and, and showing I'm definitely up, a borderline right? workaholic, so I need something. So I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be checking on you, too. I'm going to be like, uh, Ryan, uh, <laughs> we're two weeks in. <laughs> I'm going to do it. I'll probably do it this weekend. This is my weekend anyway. I'd already plan this weekend to be my week. Well, people seeing this now won't know, but yeah. I'm going to do it. I don't know when this will play, but trust me. By the time you see this, I probably already went bowling. <laughs> You're going to be um, bowling again by then. So. Or, or I'll be in the ER after I go. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're not going to get that way. Your knees, are they're going to um, power their inner Megan. <laughs> uh, <laughs> What's the male equivalent of Meg the Stallion? What would be the male equivalent? Dancing or her lyrics? I'm like, male dance. Like, I don't know if there's a male performer <laughs> equivalent. The knees? Shoot. I don't even know. It should they even, I don't think there's 50 one. Like, I don't. There is no man who can. I don't know. Oh, she probably. I, I'm not even going to say anything. I might get myself in trouble. Nope. I don't know. <laughs> If that was a question, y'all got to take a shot. Right. Y'all got to take a shot on that one. I got nothing. If that was a question. Mm. (laughs) (laughs) If if it's somebody out there, I probably don't watch them. Yeah. Uh, A lot lot of those those Vogue dance. A lot of those guys out there who do Vogue dance. I don't know any of their names. But there's a lot of guys out there who can compete with her, I bet. But um, I don't know their names. So, yeah, we'll go with that. Any any of those? I've seen them. Yeah. So. I was going to say Billy First Porter, but he's too. My old. head was Tom Brady, but I was like, "That's probably a, a good arm." Yes, yeah, so you said I was stuck on knees, but yeah, yeah, maybe I can see that. I can see Tom. I'm trying to. Think. Oh, no. You threw me off on that one. 
Now, this next one, you don't have a time limit. Um, what is your favorite quote? Uh, feel free to share it with us and then explain why it's your favorite quote, if you have one. Oh, man. Being put on the spot makes it difficult mm-hmm. to recall. Right. Oh, you know what? You can't see the whole thing. But I, I, Biggie is my, you didn't ask my favorite artist, Biggie Small. So my wall, I can't reach the camera to move it. But um, I like all, like, these are my three favorite quotes. The sky's the limit. It was all a dream. And damn right, I like the life I, li- damn right, I like the life I live because I went from negative to positive. So uh, mm. those are the three that really uh, resonate with me now. So I don't have any spiritual quotes to give you or any kind of a Maxwell leadership type. Look, I'm, I'm hip hop. That's what my hey, listen. Comes from. And that's what we love here in the First Class Life podcast, because it's all about being your authentic self and your you does not have to look like somebody else's. Yeah, you. Actually, I don't want it to. The world doesn't right, want right. it to. I love for you to show up as you. The world needs you to show up as you. So I love those quotes. Thank you. Thank and you. I, I think the one right behind you was all a dream because I started saying it in my head, Loki. Mm-hmm. Um, before, like, yes, as soon as you came on camera, I was like, it was all a dream. That's I it. To read magazine. <laughs> <laughs> you do a good biggie. I got to give you that. You do a good biggie voice right there. It's better than mine. That was good. Hey. Okay. I like that. So those pictures, did you buy them somewhere? Or did you have them custom made? Because I just love, like, I've never seen that specific, the negative to positive quote of his on, like, any type of print material. I made all of myself. When I uh, started opening my studio, I needed wall art. And I said, mm-hmm. um, who, who am I, what am I going to do? And I created all three of these. A friend of mine, shout out to Ben, uh, I mean, um, Dwight, I forgot his last name. Shoot, I should have said his name. Stelmach or something like that. Great artist. He showed me how to get the canvases made. And um, so I made them in the canvases, but I created these. I grabbed the pictures offline, put the quotes on there, designed them all. So I did that. These are all three Raji uh, originals. So <laughs> you won't find them anywhere yes. else. Listen, that's what you got to do. If you're not finding what it is that you need to take you to that next level and to keep you motivated, sometimes it's up to you to just create it or be Mm -hmm. the blueprint for those behind you. So I love that you did that. Thank you. It is definitely within you. Definitely within you. And speaking of within you, I know that you have a great project that includes a book. It has a summit all about walking in your authentic purpose, being who you're called to be. And it is called Born to be Dope. And I just Absolutely. love that. Tell us a little bit more about that project. What does it mean? Who's it for? Why did you decide to create it? Man, that was a great segue, Lindsay, because <laughs> Born to be Dope <laughs> is, is a combination of hip hop, which I love. And I've, I've grown up in that culture and personal development. And, and you can see that the, we've got clothing line, uh, just one of the sweatshirts, but want to be dope. I was like, how can I be my authentic self? Because, you know, I'm not the suit and tie. I stopped wearing ties a long time ago, right? One, because I don't have a neck, so I don't like wearing this. I play a suit and tie. I'm going to be looking like this, right? So I'll, I'll, I'm like, look, but you go and speak. Oh, you got to be in a suit and tie. I'm like, look, I love the way suit and ties look, but it's not me. I'm not comfortable. I sweat, you know, a lot. So I'm like, I don't want to be on stage in a dress shirt. And my, you get the wet spot. But I want to be me because I know I bring value to the stage. Okay, how can I do that? Hip hop. Okay, I want to be comfortable when I'm on stage and I want to incorporate who I am in all aspects of what I do. Um, so that's where Born to Be Dope came from. I was like, you know, after this is my 12th book project, but it's bigger than just a book. Um, so I was like, what is that thing? What? is going to be the the mantra that that carries me on to the next phase of this you know my, my career my business and how can i help other people with it and it was born to be dope because it's a celebration of being unapologetically great at being you just like you said we talk about being your authentic self there's so many of us out there who are stuck comparing ourselves to other people we're stuck trying to live life on other people's terms we're stuck trying to do things uh the way we feel other people told us they should be done and we're not tapping into what makes us great. And I think that that's the thing. We look at social media, we look at other people and start comparing ourselves to that imposter syndrome. And we think that, um, you know, we're not good enough. No one wants me. 
but you are born to be dope. You are born to be, uh, you know, share your special sauce, your secret sauce. So this project is about helping people master, magnify, and monetize their unique dopeness mm-hmm. so they can have maximum success and impact in life. So it started with what I call a visual mixtape, a personal development visual mixtape. Um, and what it is is a film. We, we recorded a film, filmed it. We recorded a film, a film, a film. I don't know. We made a movie. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> we made a movie. And uh, so we got people like Dr. Cheryl Wood, uh, Tracy Lee, who's a hip hop artist, Mark Clark, who's a big time media guy. We've got um, Kareem Ellis, who works with Les Brown and hosts his Monday Motivational Call, and a host of other people uh, in, in the film. And then from the film, we're doing an audio book. So those people are also creating an audio book so that you're not just going to be, able, you know, we've done, I've done compilations. I mean, anthologies, I've done books and books are great, but I'm like, if we out here trying to speak and help people, let's, let's do the audio, right? Let's let them really get a hundred percent of who we are. So we're doing an audio book. And then the really the biggest thing is the summit. We're doing a virtual summit, February 25th through 20, was it 25th to 27th? So we're doing the summit. So, um, you know, that's going to be huge and it's going to be an ongoing thing. So it's just the first one. But, um, so if you missed this one, there'll be another one coming as well. But, you know, it's just a matter of just, and it's resonated. Like, people are really attached to it. I'm like, I knew it was good. Like when I came, you know, I said like, when I came up with it, when it was delivered into me, but, uh, you know, I knew it was good, but I'm really even surprised at how much it's really resonated with people, how it's taken off. So it's been a long process of putting this first one together. And we're just finally at the point where we're, you know, about to launch this thing and people are ready and I'm excited. And I just think that, you know, it, it's it's going to be something that it's, it's opened up even more doors than I anticipated. Um, it's mm-hmm. gotten us, uh, if you don't mind me sharing, it's also gotten us a partnership. Now, I haven't announced this yet. So this is breaking news for your people um, that, uh, hey. <laughs> yes, we have even now have partnered with Exposure Network TV that we now have a TV, want to be dope, Exposure Network DMV channel. So we have the whole DMV on literally on lock. We're running the DMV. So this is open up a TV network. So now we can offer um, more exposure to people who are out there just trying to get, you know, find their way. So now they have a network that we they can come to and put their content on. So this thing has really taken off. I'm excited about it because and that's just what hip hop is. Hip hop is the most powerful cultural influence, I believe, in the last 50 years. And you just see how powerful it is because people, you know, when they feel it, you can't deny it. So it's like, you know, yeah. Yeah, just tap into that dopeness and just be you and stop comparing yourself. Stop worrying about everything else. Just go be you and watch how that helps you. So that's what we're doing, man. That's where we came from. And, and I want to thank, I want to thank the man, Biggie, baby, baby. For, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, it's just, that was really what it came from. And I'm excited about that. I just love that. It just goes to show when you are walking in your authentic self, flaws and all, Mm -hmm. it really opens up the door and connects you to your next level, not only for yourself, but everybody connected to you is also positively impacted. So that's why I am all about living your first class life, creating your first class life, which includes authentically, boldly showing up as who you are flaws and all not trying to be who your mama wants you to be or right, right. Who, who your best friend wants you to be or who your spouse wants you to be like being who you are called to be and who god made you to be Absolutely. that is the ultimate key so i can't wait for that project to drop yes i'm gonna get yes, my copies so I know that it is amazing already. And don't worry, y'all. We're going to have all of those links in the show notes for you so that you can support and get your copy and bless your own self, okay? Absolutely. <laughs> you will bless yourself while you supporting our brother here, Ryan C. Green. I'm about to put you so, on the spot on your own show, Lindsay, if you don't mind. I'm putting you on the spot on your own show because you're going to be one of oh, our featured. Oh. Yeah, you're going to be one of our featured VIPs in the next one that we're going to do in the summer. So I'm just letting you know that now. Hey, okay. I accept. Okay. I accept. All right, great, 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 great. Cool. Y'all heard her. Watch out for the next one. Yes. Featuring yes. Lindsay Burton. All right, great. Sorry. Go ahead. No, I it's know it's you it's have it's this big project. No, it like this is what it is. Like we keep it real, so it's fine. I know you have this big project, but do you have anything that's next after that? I know that this is taking off, and you have the next levels of this as well. Um, but what? How can people? reach out to you if they want to connect outside of the born to be dope. How can like, what do you have for them? 
Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for that. Uh, first of all, the Born to Be Dope is www.borntobedopesummit.com, so you can get that information there. Uh, well, she said the links will be in the, the chat, the little notes too. But um, what I'm doing now is really my my goal is really helping people who are uh, creators, speakers, experts, really hone their their offering, make their stuff look good, right? Um, put them on the next level. So what we're doing now is really focused on. You're an author and you've already written your book and you're looking to uh, develop content, um, studio quality, you know, content. We're doing that's what we're doing now. So help people take their books, transform your book into a sold out online course, transform your book into a film of itself, transform your book into uh, a digital documentary. So those are the kind of things that if you want to learn about those things, that's what we're doing. Uh, myself through my company, Greenhouse Media. Uh, so uh, that that um, what I'm going to do today, if you don't mind, I'm going to offer people an opportunity to sit down for a free chat. We can talk about their project and uh, see how we can work together to possibly uh, take their their project, their, their talk, their book to the next level. So if you want to text the word Lindsay, uh, L-I-N-D-S-E-Y, that's correct, right? I spelled it right? Mm-hmm. Okay, cool, 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 cool. That's already in the system. That'd be right. So now, <laughs> text the word Lindsay. To 614-333-0338. Text the word Lindsay to 614-333-0338. You'll get a, a text message, a link to my um, um, appointment center so that we can talk. We just have a, a doesn't cost you anything to have a conversation, hear about your project, tell you what we can do and see if, you know, this might be a good time to work together and help you develop uh, your, your, your movie, your film or your online course. Because I think that, um, uh, one of the few things that are setting us apart, is, um, you know, stopping us rather from taking it to the next level is the quality of what we're putting out there. So I think with the uh, pandemic, a lot of us uh, have been home for a long time. We're used to this digital stuff and that's cool. Um, but now it's like, OK, if you're going to do it, we, we realize what the pandemic has told us that we can do this. Right. So we can create great content. Uh, but now it's like, OK, well, as we start to come out on the other end. How do we now compete with the big boys? Like you don't have to be on an NBC or CBS uh, to have that kind of quality and that kind of content. So, but you, but you got to look a certain way. Uh, you got to have some kind of you know team working with you. So we, that's what we're doing, trying to help people, give them all the opportunity to really put their best foot forward and pre- and create the kind of uh, uh, material that that's going to make them look look great. Yes, y'all better text that, okay? L I N S E Y. Indeed. Yes, you got it right. You got it right. So how can the people connect with you? Where can they find you online, social media? Let us know. Uh, how can we slide in your DMs? Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> awesome. I am on everything at YG Speaks. So R-Y-G-S-P-E-A-K-S. So Facebook, um, Instagram, even LinkedIn, um, TikTok. What else is out for you? I don't really, I'm on Twitter, but I don't really do Twitter that often. But yeah, anything you want to find me on is Raji Speaks. RyanCGreen.com is green with the E is my website. Greenhousemedia.com is also the website. That's the company's website. It's green with the E. Don't forget the E, y'all. Don't forget the E. It's green with the E. <laughs> but uh, that's it. So I'm, I'm everywhere at Raji Speaks and uh, YouTube as well. So um, that, that's me. I'm easy to find. And you're wearing green today. Ow. Do people indeed, do that indeed. all the time. Anytime you're wearing green, they're like, "You're last name is green. You're wearing green." When I was in school, every St. Patrick's Day, when I was in you know elementary, <laughs> middle school, you're wearing green. Your last name is green. I'm like, yeah, but it's with the E, so I'm like, you know, I'm used to. It. I don't, you know, it doesn't bother me. But I'm like, yeah, that was it. That's, but that is also that is why I chose the color. I mean, because like my my brand colors are black, green. You know, variation, different variations of green. But I'm like, hey, mm-hmm. it's who I am. I'm going to embrace it. People remember. So, but yeah, green with the E. Embracing you, all of you. (laughs) Well, (laughs) this has been another amazing episode, as I knew it would be, because my first class live guests are your first class live guests, and they are amazing just like you are. So make sure that you subscribe to the First Class Life podcast. You can stay notified when new episodes drop. We are here every week with a new episode for you. And if you want some bonus content, like some extra juicy questions we got to get into in a moment, 
you got to make sure you're a member of our Patreon community. So subscribe, subscribe, subscribe so you can get access to these next gems that Ryan is about to drop for us. With that said, this is First Class Life Podcast, your personal development show because you are a high achieving leader desiring to maximize your impact while creating a life full of purpose, fulfillment, and happiness. So I pray you have a blessed and abundant day. Until next time, bye. Do you want to be surrounded by other high achieving women who are working on their goals just like you? Are you looking for your circle that's passionate about their own growth yet still wants to see you shine? Do you desire to be supported through collaborations and connections instead of competition? Then Cowork and Chill is your place to be. Cowork and Chill is a hybrid of virtual co-working and virtual networking. It's a community of women who are striving to build living legacies. This is the space to create meaningful relationships with other equally yoked women where you're being poured into just as much as you pour out. So if you're looking for your crew for supportive accountability, then sign up today at coworkandchill.com. That's C-O-W-O-R-K-A-N-D-C-H-I-L-L, coworkandchill.com. Unfortunately, all good things must come to an end. But please be sure to subscribe to the First Class Life Show. And don't forget to rate, leave a review, and join our private community so that we can continue to provide you with great personal development conversations to help you maximize your impact while creating a life full of purpose, fulfillment, and happiness. You deserve it.